comes to public service, two animals have gone far beyond the call of duty. They're known throughout the world as the symbols of safety. So let's make them fight to the death. Smokey Bear, the firefighting mascot of forest safety. And McGruff the crime dog, taking a bite out of crime wherever he goes. He's wears an arm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. In 1944, America's forests faced an ever-increasing threat. With nearly 16 million men battling Nazis overseas, little manpower remained to combat the spread of forest fires. Every year, 30 million acres of trees would go up in smoke. Damn, that's even more trees than Snoop Dogg can burn. America needed a new hero, someone who could prevent these disastrous blazes from occurring in the first place. And then along came a lovable cartoon bear named Smokey. So remember, only you can prevent forest fires. As a mascot, Smokey Bear did what he could to inspire the American people. He even partnered with Bambi to teach the ways of fire safety. However, Smokey was still merely a dream, a figment of imagination, until one fateful day in the Capitan Mountains of New Mexico. What do you know? A forest fire broke out. The mountain trees were annihilated in a blaze so intense the 30 firefighters called to action were almost incinerated. Thousands of forest critters either fled or died. All but one. Atop a smoldering tree clung a lone survivor, a small black bear cub. His paws burnt, his family lost to the flames. So after firefighters rescued him, there was only one name that fit, Smokey. Well, first they named him Hotfoot Teddy, but they couldn't waste such a great PR opportunity. Adopted into the National Zoo at Washington, D.C., young Smokey became the living symbol of fire prevention. They even made an animated short of his new official origin story, and it's... Pretty horrifying, actually. The public adored young Smokey. He received so much fan mail, he had to get his own zip code. And since then, Smokey has successfully helped prevent forest fires and promote fire safety for over 70 years. And boy, oh boy, has he done a good job. Drown your campfires with water. Make sure it's totally wet. Then stir and drown again. Indeed, in just the first 20 years, annual forest fire damage dropped over 80%. Yeah, thanks to Smokey's advice, I've never started a forest fire in my entire life. I don't believe that. To my knowledge, I mean, I've had plenty of opportunities. Well, I'm impressed. I didn't think you took anybody's advice so seriously. Why wouldn't I take Smokey's? This guy started a fire safety club, picked up ventriloquism, and even taught the Adams family to put out fires. You know, the people who love pain and things that are generally bad for you? He's befriended the creatures of the forest, much like a Disney princess, and even infiltrated Disney itself to teach their characters about fire safety. Also, unlike most mascots at the time, he successfully protected his dignity through the toughest social experience in recent history, the 90s. Respect the forest, protect our trees. Don't worry, I do it. Cut! This isn't me. Smoke. We agreed you'd talk to kids in their language. I know, but I'll just give it to them straight. Oh, and in case you forgot, he's also a goddamn bear. An American black bear, to be precise. The largest black bears are over seven feet tall and exceed 800 pounds, which seems to match Smokey's own size. Smokey's got plenty to fight with, like his razor sharp claws, his trusty shovel, and enough muscle to rip your arm off Chewbacca style. And then you have to worry about fighting a bear that's armed. Was that a pun? It wasn't even bear related. Wiz, you can't even bear the amount of puns I've got. What have you got? As if. Unlike Boomstick, Smokey isn't one to just do the bare minimum. In fact, bears in general are quite durable creatures thanks to their stout anatomy, including a skeleton so stable it endures long hibernation without withering. You better believe Smokey is strong too. Bears his size can break trees and flip over boulders weighing more than 350 pounds. When he was just a cub, Smokey even smashed this shitty little house to bits. He's surprisingly stealthy, able to sneak up on people in broad daylight with barely a sound. Also, black bears can run up to 30 miles per hour. That's what makes the bear cavalry so dangerous. <laughs> Aside from that, he's accomplished many unbelievable feats to keep the forest safe, like manipulating time. And also when he disguised himself as a woman without bearing any resemblance to his real body. Boomstick, why don't you introduce his greatest feat with your baritone voice? 
Prepare yourself because Smokey can magically grow so large he's bigger than Godzilla. Look at the size of him! All just to emphasize a point, much like how I'm owning this unbearable pun war. Oh, I'm still going! I hope you brought some sort of non-bearishable snack because I can do this all day. You're gonna be so embarrassed when you lose. No, 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 that'll never happen when it's me versus you. Ha! You missed a bear pun! You're out! Ursus is Latin for bear, moron. Ah, uh, damn it! You know Latin's my weakness. If only I was a bear, then my only weakness would be bear traps, bear repellent, and bear mace. You know, shit that people had to make to stop bears since they're so unstoppable. There are some techniques to increase your chances of surviving a bear attack. Some say you can punch your arm down their throat to induce uncontrollable vomiting. Although I wouldn't recommend that because you're definitely going to lose your arm. And it's gross. Honestly, all you can really do is make yourself look as large and intimidating as possible. Now I know a foolproof way to escape a bear. You just gotta be faster than the guy next to you. Well, it's a good thing Smokey chose a life of education and isn't chasing people down. The last thing you want after you is an eight foot tall bear with a giant shovel and a grudge. Only you can prevent forest fires. Smokey, the <clears throat> fuck? Hmm. Jim, small? I gotta get back to the forest. Let me take you on a trip back to the late 1970s, also known as the feel-good decade, a time where individualism and personal liberation took center stage. But not everybody took that as a sign of peace. Yeah, domestic crime was getting bad. Like, really bad. <coughs> At the turn of the decade, the American people made a hero to save them from themselves. A dog in a trench coat. This canine began his campaign modestly enough, but he needed a name. After eight months of polling, he was given one, along with an unforgettable slogan. Take a bite out of crime. McGruff the Crime Dog. Focused and determined to make that bite count, McGruff hit the streets hard and fast. In just a year, more than 50% of Americans had seen at least one McGruff advertisement. It's because teenagers are the victims of over 2,000 violent crimes by strangers every day. You can help stop it. That's because he was willing to get his job done by any means possible, even if it meant ultimate embarrassment. He used commercials, cartoons, comic books, video games, musicals. He even released his own anti-drug album with such classic singles as Crack and cocaine. Cause nobody's needing that crack and cocaine. Making a mess of your mind. And inhalants. Don't you inhalants? You'll be suffering pain. Cause inhalants kill. Yeah, it's really, really bad. As McGruff's plan generally targeted children rather than current criminals, it required patience and time. But it worked. Over the next few decades, crime dropped exponentially. The next generation of America was smarter and safer. Now, some of you are probably thinking, hey, you can't prove McGruff was responsible for all of that. And I say to you, can you prove he wasn't? Regardless, McGruff certainly had a massive impact leading the charge against crime. I mean, that's seriously impressive, considering all my dog does is sit around licking his balls. McGruff's not just any dog, he's a six-foot-tall bipedal bloodhound, a dog breed known for their excellent sense of smell, an extremely powerful bite, and floppy, adorable ears. Scaling him to your average bloodhound, McGruff can likely run 45 miles per hour, jump 10 feet high, and bite with enough pressure to break bones. And unlike my dog, McGruff wears a cool trench coat, which not only protects him from the rain and cold, but gives off a neat detective vibe. However, unlike Thailand's Air Chief Marshal, Mr. Fufu, Rest in peace, buddy. True story, McGruff doesn't appear to hold an official police rank. He calls himself a pretective, which is just as fake as it sounds. Oh, wait, if a crime hasn't happened yet, then how does he know to stop it? That's like some minority report shit. He possesses a certain set of skills to do so. He has a keen eye for details and context clues. He's exceptional at analyzing and predicting potential crimes in progress. So he can predict what's gonna happen with a few context clues, but that doesn't mean much if he can't stop a mugging or whatever. Luckily, McGruff has plenty of tools and talents. When someone's in trouble, McGruff's circle of respect creates a force field. Which is apparently the perfect defense against bullies. 
While he's not an official member of the police force, he's been hanging around officers for decades, so it's not unreasonable to believe he's picked up some police combat training. Being your own dog has its perks. For example, McGruff's car isn't a standard beat-up police cruiser, it's a friggin' monster truck! This bad mamma jamma is based on a 2010 Ford Super Duty with 540 cubic inches of gas-guzzling badassery. Definitely an upgrade over his original 96 model, though I'm not sure what this has to do with preventing crime. Screw preventing crime! This beautiful beast prevents all kinds of other stuff, like boredom, being a little sissy, and small European cars from going unsmashed. That's enough for me. Ironically, despite his skills and claim to stop crimes before they happen, he's more of a counselor than a protector, and doesn't actually step in all that often. No, but he doesn't need to when he can freeze time! Ah uh, yes, McGruff is famous for pausing time and breaking the fourth wall to discuss an ongoing potential crime. Unfortunately, while pausing time, McGruff does not seem capable of interacting with the world around him. Ah, uh, that's Jenny. But that's not Jenny's dad. If she gets into that car, that may be the last time you'll see Jenny. He doesn't even bother saving Jenny from her kidnapper. Which means he was right! That was the last time we saw Jenny! Still, McGruff's campaign has been wildly victorious. It's safe to say he succeeded in taking a bite out of crime. Oh my god, we didn't even mention the reality flipping switch he has in his office! What the hell is up with that thing? I'm McGruff the Crime Dog, and I'm here to help take a bite out of crime. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, I've got a public service announcement for you. It's about food. Grandpappy Boomstick always said that nothing in life is better than good food and making something with your own two hands. And Blue Apron is both those things combined. Blue Apron is the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. All ingredients arrive right to your door, guaranteed fresh and ready to cook. It's better than eating fast food, plus it's affordable. Blue Apron is less than $10 per person per meal. Choose from a variety of recipes and get the meals that sound good to you. The ingredients are perfectly proportioned and the instructions are easy to follow. I mean, even Boomstick can do it. Hey, watch it or you're not getting any of the next meal I make when it arrives. Like the soy glazed pork and rice cakes with bok choy and marinated green beans. And if you're worried about variety, don't bother. Recipes are not repeated within the year, so you'll never get bored. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free, with free shipping, by going to blueapron.com slash battle. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait! That's blueapron.com slash battle. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Remember, kids, fire is a dangerous tool which should never be left unattended. Well, time to go! Only you could have prevented that forest fire, fool. your surroundings. I'll show you respect. Remember, kids, if you're about to be mauled by a bear, Stupid dog. Take a bite out of this! Remember, kids, remember me. KO! 
Looks like McGruff had a rough time out there. Smokey was clearly the stronger combatant thanks to... Well, thanks to being a giant bear, really. McGruff wasn't totally outclassed. His greater speed and smaller size made the battle quite tedious for Smokey. But that's about it. Yeah, he couldn't compete with Smokey in anything else. It's like my grandpappy always said, why have a guard dog when you can get a guard bear? But what truly mattered in this battle were their unique abilities, and in that, McGruff didn't stand a chance. When McGruff paused time, he couldn't affect the world around him, while Smokey has shown that he can. And really, what are you gonna do against a bear that can grow to the size of a mountain? So, bear beats dog, Smokey's powers were superior, and ultimately Smokey had far more options to take McGruff down for good. Smokey was just more than McGruff could bear. Haha, <laughs> one last bear pun! Suck it, Wiz! Uh, the winner is Smokey Bear. Stick around, we're about to announce the combatants for the next death battle. And if you want to watch exclusive commentary on this episode, click that little box over there and start a first membership trial. Only you can prevent forest fires. Click the link below and help save lives.